Hey there, welcome to part 4 of the Protopy crash course. So in this video, what we will learn is how to build basic paging and scrolling animations. But we'll make it a little more interesting as you see here. So this is a simple paging animation, but it's a dynamic one. And as you keep paging these layers, you can see the size of it scaling uh, dynamically as you interact. Um, the dots can also be animated, but I've initially not done it in this video so that I can give you an opportunity to do it. Um, but I'll share the source files for that as well. So the source files for this will be along with the description and you can also check out designerx.io for the classroom experience. So without any more talk, let's get started. So I'm going to close this and create a new protopy file. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to create a new file. Um, here I have the sketch file open. So if I go back, this is the sketch file that I'm going to use. Let's quickly take a look at how I've organized the layers. So here's my artboard and these are the dots um, and I've named them perfectly. These are oval one, two, three and each of its fill state are also right there. And this is the horizontal scroll with each card. Um, I haven't named these cards any different and now I have the backdrop. So uh, if I jump back into Protopy, first thing I need to do is to fix the size 360, 760. I'm going to go to custom and say 360, 760 and 2x and hit on enter. And um, let me import it with command I. Um, I'm going to select artboard 1 and import. Okay, so here we have our layers from sketch. To make this layer scrollable, it's a fairly straightforward. We saw this earlier. You select the layer that you want to scroll, the container that you want to scroll, and scroll down and select scroll. But instead of the vertical direction that we did last time, now you want to select the horizontal direction. And as soon as you select it, you can see that it becomes scrollable and like I said earlier, you need to fix the size of this. So you can hold Alt to drag on both sides and then place it in the middle so that this becomes the viewport for scroll. So I'm going to go back Command Tilt to see the preview. And then when I start scrolling, it scrolls. But there is a small problem over here. The problem is this area, the area that you see that we have restricted the bounds of the container is the only area that's scrollable. Everything outside it, as you see here, isn't. So how do you really fix this? So the way to do this is you select your group and you have a property called hit area. So hit area defines the area in which you interact with that container. So this area will cover some of the padding outside this container, which also becomes an active area. So for example, let me add a padding of 20 pixels around and immediately you can see in the viewport, let me try and zoom in, that you have a, a padding defined, which becomes a hit area. So let's make it 50 and this is a much larger, even if let, let's make it 100. So this covers the entire screen making it an active hit area or a click area for this paging or scrolling container. So if I go back into the preview and scroll anywhere within this hit area, I should be able to scroll perfectly. Now you notice a small weird displacement in the layers when you try to page scroll it. So if you see here, the last layer is slightly displaced towards the right. And when you move this properly, it adjusts itself. And the reason this happens is because there is a shadow around this layer. If I click on this layer properly, um, you can see the bounds of this layer is actually higher than the, the visible section itself. And this bounds comes from the shadow. So since the size of the scroll is lesser than that of the layer, including its, its shadow area that defines the entire image. That is the reason why um, this weird displacement is happening. 
So to fix this, all you need to do is let's see how big this is. It's about 192 cross 192. So you simply need to go back to horizontal scroll and see this is 176 cross 176. So if you make it 192 cross 192 and position it at the center, you should be good to go. But all the layers are constrained to the top left edge. I'm going to select all my layers and then position it in the center. And now um, if I select horizontal scroll and push into the center, let's also remove the click area for top and bottom because mostly we just need the left and right. So we can just go back here. Um, you can just make this zero. Then you can just equal, check this off and make this 100 and 100. So that should just make the sides tappable and the rest of it should be fine. I'll go back into the preview and then if you see now, it pages perfect. It does not have that displacement. So let's try to do some scaling effect when the layer is in view, when you're trying to interact with this layer. So um, when we scroll, we want the layer to interact based on the exact scroll position. So to do this, uh, you need to learn a concept called chaining. So chaining would chain a particular interaction and it would be a real-time chaining, which means as you interact with it, the values reflect elsewhere on the page. So let's do it to understand how it works. I'm going to add a trigger and call chain to go see what the documentation says. Um, okay, I'm going to bring this here where the changes of the property of one layer changes the property of another layer. It's as simple as that. So um, if when you tap on chain trigger, and then what, the, what we need to chain here is the horizontal scroll, uh, scroll direction. So it's going to be the X position um, because as you scale, as you scroll, the X position would naturally change. So we need to, oh sorry, it's the scroll position. So when you scroll this one, the scroll position should naturally change. And then as you change the scroll, you want to scale the layers accordingly. So let's go back here and let's add an action called scale. So now when you select scale and when you select scale by size or factor, it's the same example that we saw earlier, what sizes and factors. So let's understand how our scroll position works. So our scroll position should start with zero and end at a particular value. In this range, we have to define that it starts at zero and, and ends at a particular value. And in between these, now what do we have to scale? We have to scale each element based on the scroll position. So now I'm going to go here and select which rectangle. Let's say I'm in rectangle one. So between zero and 192, which is the width of the scroll, which will be the same as scroll position. We want it to be the same height, 192. Um, so let's, let's do a factor. In fact, that's easier. So we want it to go from 100 um, to, oh, it should start at one night at a uh, higher scale scaling position when it's at the beginning, right? So we have to start it at 120 cross 120 to when it's at 192, which means the first one is finished scrolling. This is 192 position. It should be at 100. So what this basically means is in the range of zero to 192, the chaining will scale the first rectangle, this one, from 120 to 100. So as you see here, it's scaled already. Now as I scroll, it goes from 120 to 100. Now the reason this doesn't scale uh, along the center is because we have defined the origin to be on the top left. So to change that, all we need to do is select the rectangle. In fact, let's select all four of them and change the origin to the center and go back into the preview. 
see our first scaling works pretty neat. Now we just have to replicate the same effect into all the other layers as well. So an easy way to do this is just copy and paste as many times or as many layers that you have. It's a prototype and you can select say rectangle copy 2, rectangle copy 3 and rectangle copy. Sorry, I'm going to move this here and rectangle copy. So each of them should scale accordingly. So as simple as that, let's scale from say 192 to 192 plus 190 or 192 into 2. As simple as that, you should, should not worry about calculations. And again, 192 into 2 to 192 into 3. And then let's go into here and then select 192 into 3 cross 192 into 4. Okay, um, and if you notice in the timelines, you can see it evenly placed. So the scale value goes from 0 to 192, and this goes from 192 to 192 into 2, and likewise. So let's select the second layer. So what should happen to the second layer? When it's from 192 to 192 into 2, which is 192 to 384, it should basically go from, actually it should, yeah, it, it should scale from 100 to 120, right? So, oh no, it should scale from 100 to 120 when it's zero to 192. So what we can do is let's add another range, okay? So now we can say zero to 192, it should scale from 100 to 120. And when we go back here, see, this happens, right? But there's this weird glitch is because we have defined this as well. Let's close this. This is range one. And range two, 192 to 192 into two, it goes from again 120 to 100. Okay, so now, this works as expected. Now we're just looking at the second layer. So let's do the same thing for the third one. Um, let's select the third one and we just have to add a second one. So it's 192 into 2 to, okay, one, it's 192 to 192 into 2. Yeah, so it's basically in this duration, we need it to go from 100 to 120 and from this duration which is this range we need it to go from 120 to 100 so let's see if that works yeah and do the same thing for the next one so it's going to be 192 into 2 and 192 into 3 okay so again we need to scale during this phase 120 120 and as simple as that, we have a neat scaling animation, which works perfectly. When you try to drag this, it still responds as expected. So let's try a small assignment based on what we learned just now. Using the same concept, what you can do is basically scale or move the position of each of the dots to the next one based on the exact position. So note that there are four here to, so you might want to add one more dot over here, or you can reduce this to three rectangles and see how you can use the same logic using scale to change the opacity of each of the dots. So you need not move, you, you can choose if you want to move, you can basically at this position, move the chain, move one dot to the next one which will basically make it appear like it's moving on top of uh, the screen. If that's what you want, you can do that. Or if you just want to change the opacity of each of the colored dots, you can do that as well. So using the same logic, um, you can try how this will work. I'll attach the source files along with the description. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video.